Team Builder is a new tool built specifically for the UNSW Faculty of Engineering Moodle. It intelligently allocates teams or groups based on a set of criteria that you specify. Team Builder works by asking your students a series of questions, then using the results from those questions to generate teams. So the first thing we need to think about is what our teams are for. Let's say we're sending our students out to various parts of Sydney to perform some interviews for a survey. Each team will need to visit a number of places in Sydney and ask strangers a series of questions. For this exercise, we'll need people on each team who know their way around Sydney and who are comfortable interviewing members of the public. A team builder is an activity module, and so appears under the Add an Activity dropdown in your Moodle course. When you add a team builder, you'll be presented with a familiar Add an Activity page. It's important to pick a name that's meaningful to your students. For most of them, the name Team Builder will be meaningless. This will appear to them as a simple questionnaire, so pick a name that makes sense. We'll say Assignment 1 Questionnaire. For a description, we'll say this questionnaire will be used to build the teams for Assignment 1. For the purposes of this example, we'll assume students are already familiar with the content of Assignment 1. Here you can select which students will be splitting into teams. If you only want some students in your course to be allocated into teams, put them in a group and select it here. We're going to go ahead and say all students. These two dates are very important. Before the open date and after the close date, the students will not be able to access the questionnaire. Crucially, you will not be able to update the questionnaire after the open date. You will also not be able to change the open date once it has passed. We'll set it to open tomorrow at 9 o'clock, and then close the same day at 5. This checkbox allows students to update their answers on your questionnaire. We're okay with that, so we'll check it. Save and display, and here's our questionnaire. Now we've got to think about what questions we're going to ask. We've already determined the kind of people we need in our teams. Someone who knows Sydney well, and someone who's confident talking to strangers. There are three kinds of question. Select one, select any, and select at least one. All three are multiple choice. The difference lies in how the students can answer them. For select one, students can only select one answer. For select any, students can select as many answers as they like. Select at least one is the same as select any, except that students are required to select at least one answer. For our first question, Let's see how well our students know Sydney. Let's just ask them directly, how well do you know Sydney? We'll make this a select one question and create answers very well, fairly well, and not well at all. We click add new question and it appears in our questionnaire. Now we'll get a bit sneaky. We'll ask them if they know where certain places are within Sydney, including a few that don't exist. This will be a select any. Do you know how to get to the following Sydney suburbs from UNSW? We've included some handy keyboard shortcuts for making your questionnaire. If you hit enter or return, you'll jump down to the next answer box. If there's not one there, it'll be created for you. Then you can hit Control Enter if you're on a PC or Command Return if you're on a Mac to add that question to the questionnaire. If you make a mistake or want to remove a question, just click the delete link in the top right hand corner of the question. Let's add our final question about talking to strangers. How do you feel about talking to random members of the public in a formal setting? We'll make this a select at least one. We'll just add some emotions here. If you have any blank answer boxes, they'll be ignored. Let's say we wanted to break up our Sydney questions with our public speaking question. We can use the handles at the left hand side of each question to reorder our questionnaire. Hmm. No, I think I liked it better the way we had it before. Click Save Questionnaire and we're ready for our students to start responding. 
we can preview how it will look for them by using the Preview tab. Okay, all of our students have responded to our questionnaire, so let's build our teams. When we click on our Team Builder instance now, we're taken straight through to the Build Teams tab. We can still view and preview our questionnaire, but we can no longer edit it. Now there's a lot on this page, so let's go through it bit by bit. This is your predicate. That's a series of criteria that you'll use to build your teams. More on that later. This is your number of teams. You can create as many teams as you want. These are your unassigned students. This box contains all the students not yet assigned to teams. You can manually assign students to your teams simply by dragging them onto the team. And finally, these are your teams. You can rename your teams by double clicking on the team name. Now let's get into the heart of the team builder. The predicate. The predicate starts with a simple English sentence, at least one student who, and lets you fill in the blanks. Let's start with our second question, about interviewing members of the public. We want students who are comfortable talking to members of the public, so we'll pass through students who answered confident. You might have noticed this number here. That's the number of students who meet this criterion. If it's red, then there's not enough students who meet this criterion for there to be one in each team. As you can see, we've got two teams and only one student who said they're confident interviewing strangers. That's a problem. Let's settle for unfazed. If we select this as well, we see that we get a few more people. Three students said they are unfazed or confident with the situation we're going to be putting them in. Let's move on to our Sydney question. We need to add a new criterion to our predicate. So we click Add New Criterion. Notice that there's an arrow joining the two. It says And. If we click it, we can change it to Or. This allows us to build very complex predicates, but for the moment, we want it to stay on AND. We want students who know Sydney well, so we'll select students who said they know Sydney very well. Once again, we've only got one student, so we'll let students through who said they know Sydney fairly well. And now we've got four students. Great. You can easily view a student's responses by clicking on them. As we can see, we've got four students who said they know Sydney either very well or fairly well. Now, remember our next question, the one with the fake answers? Well, let's just take a look at those students and figure out if any of them are perhaps overestimating their abilities. Now, our two fake answers are Chadstone, which is in Melbourne, and Battery Park, which is in New York City. We're going to do something a bit advanced here. We're going to add a sub-criterion. That is, an additional clause to our sentence. When we click the sub-criterion button here, we get an extension to our sentence and answered than the language we're familiar with. So let's take our second question. Do you know how to get to the following Sydney suburbs from UNSW? Now let's take a closer look at that sentence. At least one student who answered, do you know how to get to the following Sydney suburbs with any of the following. That little drop down allows us to change the qualifier in this sentence. As you can see, we have the option of any, all, or none. We want to catch out the fake answers, so we'll select none. We check Chadston and Battery Park, and now we notice that our counter down here has dropped back to three. And if we check our students' responses, yes, Mr. Smith here has said that he knows how to get to both those places from UNSW. I hope he brought his passport. Now we're ready to build our teams. If you want to know the algorithm used to build your teams, you can check out the documentation for Team Builder. Click Build Teams, and voila! There are two students in each team, one who meets each criterion. If there aren't enough students to meet the criteria, Team Builder will allow members to double up on responsibilities, but it prefers to allow different team members to satisfy different criteria. Now we've still got two students here who haven't been allocated to teams. That could be because they don't match any of the criteria, or because the Team Builder got done building the teams and doesn't need any more students. In either case, it's simple to either allocate them yourself by dragging and dropping, or allocate them randomly by
by clicking Allocate Randomly. Random allocation works at any time and will only ever affect students in the Unassigned Students box. The final step is to create our groups. To do this, we click Create Groups. Our groups will be collected into a grouping, and we have to give that grouping a name. We'll call it Assignment 1. We also have the option of prefixing our team names with our grouping name. Since our teams are still called Team A and Team B, which are pretty meaningless names by themselves, we'll leave that checked. Click OK, and we're all done. We can go into our course's groups, and here we see them, Assignment 1 Team A and Assignment 1 Team B. And if we go into our groupings, we see Assignment 1. Now our teams are all ready to go out and do our assignment, with confidence that they'll get to where they're going, and they'll be able to interview people once they're there. That about covers the main features of Team Builder. If you get lost at any time, you can refer to the documentation by clicking on the help icons, or come back and watch this video again.